All right. Well, hey, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this video is going to be uh, more of an informational video, and hopefully I can spit it all out because there is a lot of things going on here. So what I'm going to explain today was requested by a friend who I will also call a critical viewer of my content, but I appreciate the feedback. So with that being said, what we're going to do today is go over what makes this motor special and why it spins backwards. Okay, so the reason why it needs to spin opposite or backwards compared to the port motor is because the propellers need to counter rotate. And I could go on and on about why that's important, but the, the basic of that is the counter rotation will cancel out any prop walk from them both spinning in the same direction. You don't want that. So they will spin opposite of each other or counter rotate. So that is why this motor has to spin backwards. Now, there's a few different parts in here to make it spin backwards, and we'll go through all of that. But on the surface level, once you look at the back here, and fortunately I'm lucky enough to have a sticker that says uh, rotation clockwise, which equates to a right hand or counter rotating motor, that tells me that the crank's gonna spin clockwise, and in my particular case, I have a timing chain still, so the camshaft is going to spin backwards and for that to still work I believe the lobes are ground for the reverse firing order and that's how the camshaft is a reverse rotation camshaft the uh, lobes are just changed to sequence the timing events of the reverse firing order now where it gets tricky and where I ran into problems over the summer is the distributor has to spin clockwise, whether it's reverse or standard rotation motor, that cannot change. And the reason behind that is the oil pump has to spin this direction. The oil pump will not work in reverse. So no matter what, whether it's a right hand or left hand motor, a which is synonymous with you know counterclockwise, clockwise, and right hand, left hand, uh, reverse rotation, standard rotation. So all those are interchangeable and those will be confusing. With that being said, they figured out that if you cut the helical gear on the back of the camshaft and the helical gear the opposite direction on the distributor shaft, that combination will allow the camshaft to spin clockwise or backwards while keeping the distributor spinning clockwise, which is standard throughout. That can only spin clockwise. Now, from there, the internals of the distributor are the same. It still has a reluctor wheel, a pickup magnet, and a rotor in there, same standard cap, same ignition module. What changes is the firing order. The plug wires are quite literally put backwards around the uh, rotor. So instead of your traditional 1, 8, 4, 3, 6, 5, 7, 2 on a standard or left-hand rotation motor, in this case it's going to go 1, 2, 7, I'm cheating, 6, 8, oh I messed it up. I'm looking at the paper and I still messed it up. The right hand or reverse firing order is 1, 2, 7, 5, 6, 3, 4, 8. So that's different than your standard Chevy rotation there. So in this case, that's really all it is. The only unicorn part which I've had the hardest time finding is the distributor with the reverse cut helical gear. And apparently you cannot just swap that gear because of the direction of the thrust that those helical gears produce. So I believe in a standard motor, it's pushing up on the distributor shaft and there are some thrust washers or bearings provisioned on a standard distributor for that. Um, and with the reverse cam and the reverse helical gear, I believe that it's being pulled down on the, on the distributor shaft. 
So there's an extra set of bearings in there that keep that from wearing out or you know causing too much problem. And I think that makes this a unicorn part. I couldn't just take a regular standard rotation distributor and swap the gears without having that provision for those bearings in there. Um, I've seen some people do it. I didn't want to take the risk because if that blows up, uh, it's game over on the motor and I don't even want to think about that. So I'm going to keep looking for one as a spare and just bite the bullet. I mean, it was almost a thousand dollars, but you know, thousand dollar distributor or $15,000 motor, you know, we'll see. But anyway, I digress further from that, but let's go through and kind of walk the motor, look at the identifying marks, and I'll uh, show you guys the distributor cap. And, you know, really that's about it because everything else is internal. I can't pull out the camshaft for a video, <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to pull out the bottom end to look and see if the crank does in fact have the oil holes drilled 180 degrees off for reverse rotation. But anyway, so let's go through the back of the motor and kind of walk through this quickly again. That was pretty much a big summary of it. Um, it's kind of hard to show, you know, a lot of this stuff because it's inside the motor, but, you know, let's take a look. Okay, so looking at the motor here, on the back, I'm lucky enough to have a sticker that says engine rotation that way, which that corresponds with clockwise. The first part that's pretty critical is that you have to have a right hand or reverse rotation starter. This does spin backwards, you know, because you have to spin, spin the flywheel the opposite direction. Okay, so right hand motor and right hand starter. Then we have the crank spinning clockwise. And then in this particular case, the timing chain, which again, you can't see, but is located behind the flywheel and the water pump here, down back here is a timing chain cover. And maybe I'll throw a picture on the video in there, see what that looks like. Now, because it's a timing chain, the camshaft will also spin the same direction as the crankshaft. And as I said earlier, the cam lobes are changed to the reverse firing order and the helical gear down on the camshaft is backwards and then the helical gear on the distributor shaft is again backwards to allow this to spin clockwise. Now, as I cheated earlier and looked at my sheet, the firing order is indeed backwards. So if we look at this, here's number one, and we're spinning clockwise, we go one, two, seven, five, six, three, four, eight, yep, and one. So this does indeed fire backwards, because standard rotation, which, you know, they couldn't bother to change that, you know, that is the regular firing order, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. But, like I said earlier, inside the distributor, it's standard, nothing special, it's regular ignition coil, and so on and so forth. All right, well, I hope that made at least a little bit of sense. It took me a while to figure out what I had and how this motor worked. So I'll take a little bit of time here and explain some other combinations that I have read about and different ways this can be achieved while the crankshaft is still spinning clockwise or right hand, reverse rotation, all the same. Another way to get around having to deal with a reverse ground camshaft is you could have timing gears up, up front of the motor in the timing cover. So the timing chain keeps the crank and the camshaft spinning the same direction, but if you use the appropriate two gears, one on the cam and one on the crank, the camshaft will effectively spin backwards or it'll spin the normal counterclockwise rotation. And then that would eliminate the need for a special 
distributor with the special reverse ground helical gears on it and all of that would be normal from that point as well. That was another combination I've seen, uh, but I'm not sure which is more common, the gear setup or the timing chain setup on the reverse rotation motors. But that's another one that seems to be prevalent as well.